Do testosterone boosters actually work? I'm Dr. Rina Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and in the next few weeks, I'm gonna be releasing several videos on testosterone boosters, basically a variety of supplements and dietary adjuncts that people often promote for the benefit of improving testosterone. Having low testosterone is increasingly more common, and I've talked about this before in a number of videos, but we now know that almost 40% of men over the age of 40 have some symptoms of low testosterone. This can include things like fatigue, erectile dysfunction, decreased sex drive, decreased muscle mass, mood changes or depression, and even cognitive changes or brain fog. Having low testosterone puts you at a higher risk of a number of metabolic issues like diabetes, high cholesterol, cardiovascular disease. However, unfortunately, a lot of times people either don't see a physician or don't get treated for their low testosterone. And hence, they're more often looking for other ways or natural ways to improve their testosterone. So my goal with this series is to empower you with the knowledge to find things that actually work. But do realize that dietary supplements have a huge financial incentive to get you to buy them. Just for scale, in 2018, nearly $9 billion of supplements were sold in the United States, 9 billion. Ultimately, you have to do your own research and I'm gonna help you with that. So let's get down to the data. Do these actually work? Today, we're gonna to be talking about androstenedione, dione, androstene diol, and DHEA. Now these supplements were available over the counter from the years of 1986 to 2004, at which point the FDA and the US Department of Health and Human Services relabeled androstenedione dione and androstene diol as anabolic steroids and started tightening regulations so that these were now scheduled three controlled substances and required a prescription from a physician. DHEA still remains available over the counter. Let's start with androstenedione. dione. Now, all of these are pro-hormones and they're involved in the cholesterol pathway. And so androstenedione dione is an endogenous androgen and it's synthesized through the cholesterol pathway from pregnenolone and progesterone. It's later then converted to testosterone by the action of a specific enzyme called 17-beta-hydroxysteroid. It's also converted to estrone, which is later converted into estradiol. And just to give you a basic understanding, testosterone and estradiol in your blood send signals back to the brain or the hypothalamic pituitary axis to tell you, do you have enough or do you need more? And so if you have more of it, it's going to tell your body to decrease production of testosterone or estradiol and vice versa. In the studies of androstenedione, dione, they supplemented men with 300 milligrams daily for once a month. In that one month, they did see a significant increase in total testosterone levels of about 34%. However, when they continued that supplementation for up to 12 weeks at 300 milligrams daily, they actually noticed that the testosterone went back to baseline and there was no longer an increase. They did, however, notice that there was an increase in estradiol levels. And this is important because when estrogens or estradiol are elevated, it can lead to some adverse events. This can include things like having breast enlargement, what we call gynecomastia, or having unfavorable lipid profiles, meaning that your cholesterol, your bad cholesterol goes up. In addition to looking at blood levels, they also looked at lean body mass. And what they found was that there was no increase in lean body mass or type two muscle fibers, and there was no decrease in fat mass. So these are all things that we would expect to see if you're increasing your testosterone. You'd expect to see more lean body mass, less fat mass. They did see in blood work that there was an increase in LDL to HDL, as well as an increase in apolipoprotein A to apolipoprotein B, meaning that you are now at higher risk for cardiovascular events because of these changes in your lipids. So ultimately, while this mechanistically seemed like, oh, this is great, it's a pro-hormone, it's gonna to lead to more testosterone production, it didn't end up making a lasting impact with daily supplementation and it didn't actually give you the anabolic changes or muscle growth that you would expect if you were taking testosterone. Now let's move on to androstenedione diol. Now this is another product of the cholesterol pathway. It's actually converted from DHEA and then later down the line converted to directly to testosterone. However, 
The mechanism of action is believed to be that the androstene diol converts to androstene diol. And the reason for this is when they did studies on androstene diol, they found actually increased levels of androstene diol. Now, after they supplemented androstene diol for about 28 days, they again, they saw the significant in increase in androstene diol, as well as free testosterone and dihydrotestosterone, but there was no change in the serum testosterone or the total testosterone. Now this sounds great, right? Free testosterone is the testosterone that's available for your body to use for all those good activities. However, in this study, they also noticed an increase in serum estradiol or other estrogens, and they saw the same negative impacts in terms of lipids. So they saw a decreased HDL, increased LDL, and subsequently they were worried about an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. And also looking at lean body mass, they did not see a benefit in terms of lean body mass or fat mass with androstene diol. Okay, so let's move on lastly to DHEA. Now DHEA is also a precursor of testosterone and it's actually been relatively reasonably well studied. So looking at the initial studies of DHEA, they supplemented them for over 12 weeks and they saw of course an increase in DHEA as expected, meaning that you're taking it, it's actually causing an increase in DHEA, but they did not see a statistically significant increase in lean body mass strength or serum testosterone levels. Now looking at all the data together in what we we call meta-analyses of the highest quality studies, double-blinded, placebo-controlled, randomized controlled trials, they again found that there was a significant increase in DHEA as well as estradiol levels after supplementation, but there was no significant increase in total serum testosterone. And they looked at some other things. They also saw no improvement in bone mineral density or sexual function outcomes, including erectile function. The good news is they didn't see any changes in the lipid profiles like they did with the andro supplements. However, because there's an increase in estradiol, it is something that I would monitor if you decided that you wanted to try DHEA. Based on the data that I reviewed for andro as well as DHEA, I would say that probably these are not the best supplements to use. And this is because, you know, pro-hormones, they have multiple conversions and pathways. They don't necessarily just go straight to testosterone. And so because of these multiple conversions, you can have these unintended or negative impacts like the ones we talked about. So ultimately, I would generally recommend not using these supplements to boost your testosterone. Now again, like I said, I'm going to continue this series all through the summer talking about a variety of different supplements that are highly touted to boost testosterone. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that every video that comes out, you get notified. And next week, I'm gonna review fenugreek, also known as Trigonella phonum graecum. If you want to check out my older videos on Tonkat Ali and Ashwagandha, which are also ingredients that are often found in testosterone boosting supplements, check those out. I may remake those, but at this point in time, those are available for you to review as well. And as always, you want to take care of yourself because you're worth it.